Um, our agenda for today is uh, we'll, we'll talk about how Petrium's artificial intelligence enables your journey to autonomous operations. We'll give you a preview of our industrial AI autopilot product uh, with AutoSteer that brings new levels of control and automation to your uh, operations. We'll talk about a customer who presented with us yesterday uh, at, uh, in the Metalson Mining Track. I'm not sure if you, if you were able to catch it, but uh, I'm told it will be recorded. And lastly, um, uh, Prabal will do a deep dive into uh, the architecture that we use, how we engaged with, uh, uh, how we uh, integrated with uh, the Pi infrastructure already in place to deliver this artificial intelligence. And a lot, we'll close with how to engage with Petrum and any questions that you might have. So with that, I'll get started. Um, I'm Lena Joshi. I think I already introduced myself. Prabal, did you want to take a moment? Okay, we'll, we'll do that afterwards. Um, who is Petrum? Uh, Petrum uh, was founded by Dr. Eric Shing. He's the world's number one ranked machine learning scientist, uh, according to csrankings.com. Uh, he's also head of uh, Carnegie Mellon University's machine learning department. And many of the staff at Petrum are uh, PhD program students from, uh, from Carnegie Mellon uh, and uh, former students of Eric and many other uh, researchers in the machine learning space. Now, why is this important that we have such a, uh, such a deep bench of machine learning experts is because when you talk artificial intelligence, it actually consists of many different fields. You may have uh, robotic vision, you may have uh, natural language processing, you may have time series data processing, just a range of different um, types of data uh, that need to be uh, incorporated into, into your analyses. And for this, uh, you, you do need a depth of expertise in all of these areas to, to deliver really uh, strong machine learning solutions. Our mission was, is to bring this latest cutting edge uh, technology uh, for, to solve real world challenges. And by real world challenges, we're not talking about the simple rule based systems that are already in place that is already delivering value to you. For those simple things, if you're happy with them, that's great, stay there. If you have complex problems that require optimizing up, uh, across hundreds and thousands of variables, if you have complex challenges that involve looking at things uh, using computer vision, analyzing them, there's a lot of unstructured data that needs to be incorporated in, in, into the analyses. That's what you would use artificial intelligence machine learning solutions for. And we're here to bring that technology uh, to your organizations. Our approach, or things that distinguish us, is that we think of bringing this AI to you in a civil engineering manner. And what that means is we have a set of building blocks that, uh, that deliver this AI. We pull together these building blocks with 10, 20% customization for your environment, because AI is context sensitive, and, and pull it together as complete software for you. Making sense so far? Cool. Um, just a little bit about the context for why, why, why this is the, the right time for AI. I know a lot of you are, are, are already have uh, AI initiatives in your organization. Uh, it's really a journey that began a few years ago with digitization. A lot of you now have a greater visibility into your own operations and infrastructure because of sensors that have been put in place thanks to historians such as OSI SoftPy, which have done a great job of aggregating and uh, making this data available for you. Um, and what we're seeing in, in, in where most companies are today is that they're utilizing this visibility to, to implement some level of analysis, some level of automation, uh, but really the next level of benefit that you will get in terms of uh, leaps in productivity, leaps in efficiency, leap, increased yields, increased throughputs is going to come from an infrastructure that is autonomously adapting to changes in your environment, that is dynamic and intelligent enough to learn what's going on, to predict very precisely what's going to happen, prescribe what necessary actions you should take, and in some cases, as we showcased uh, with our customer yesterday, even do a supervised auto steer of some very complex processes in your environment. Make sense? Cool. 
So what, what is the advantage? What do you get out of implementing this? So some of this, this, I'm just hoping to capture some of the advantages. Of course, in places where your tools couldn't already see using computer vision, the, the advantages, clearly now you can do it. You couldn't do it before. But really, um, in, in places where there are very complex processes and uh, you're dependent on very skilled operators to run these processes, the advantage comes from the AI being able to look for higher levels of optima and to push your systems to get to that higher level of optima. If your constraints are, there are many and are constantly changing and your operator has to constantly react, the AI, they tend to stay within a comfort zone and the AI can adjust um, more dynamically and even push, uh, augment the operator's understanding of the process and help get to a, 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 a higher level of yield and efficiency than could be achieved before. Um, another set of advantages that comes with Petium is that um, it's not simple, I mean, there's a lot of uh, data analytics or linear regression masquerading as AI, we're not that. We, are, we, we do have the expertise that, uh, that allows us to create models which learn the, uh, not just the linear patterns, but the nonlinear patterns, the temporal patterns, long range patterns in your data. So for example, your ma variables may have uh, a, a short term memory, uh, your systems may have a drift, the AI is able to capture these very complex patterns. If you want to, to do uh, you want to do an action based on some set of conditions that happened exactly five seconds before, not more, not less, you would not be able to do this with a simple rule-based system. The AI is actually able to implement this. The second piece, of course, comes from very uh, co uh, sophisticated data processing techniques that increase our robustness to noisiness or dirtiness in the data. If there may be outliers, the your data may be at different intervals, the timestamps may be off. We utilize a number of, uh, see a series of techniques that cleanse the data and make sure that the models that we create are accurate and responsive to the actual patterns in the data. And lastly, we implement it the way with standardized machine learning pipelines and integrations with your environment, uh, thanks to, uh, again, systems like OSI Soft 5, which allows for rapid and scalable deployment. So we, we can repeatably deploy um, a solution from plant to plant, site to site, uh, very quickly. So those are our advantages. I'm gonna hand over to uh, uh, Prabal now to talk about the product. Thank you, Lena. Um, Prabal Acharya, uh, I was actually with uh, Wayside for about 18 years. Before that, actually, it's a full journey. I was actually a customer of Wayside Shop when I used to work for BP and bought Pi around the early 90s, 93, 94. We were the first one to bring it to BP. Later on, when BP merged with Amoco, we learned that Craig Herkler bought that uh, in 1989. So long time relationship with OSI Sub Pi system. Been in the IoT analytics and AI for over the last four or five years doing this uh, startups and other journeys. So very excited to be here and present what we have achieved so far with uh, Samex and a few other customers and what we have done with OSI Soft. Um, before going into this thing, I want to take you back with one of, one of the slides that um, Alina was pointing at. This is actually a very interesting thing. So whether we're using, started using the word autopilot and then auto steer uh, to steer it. The things like that is not uncommon. If you look at anything in your um, process uh, control systems, you actually have static matrices that actually runs the systems, whether it's done through APCs or MPCs and all. Uh, when we were working with Semex, we found out that the coolers, based on the feed and based on the flows, will go into one part of the matrix. These matrix are actually static. What we do is that turn that into dynamic. And not just the dynamic in one layer, but in multi-layers. And that's what the power of Petrum and Petrum AI platform brings in. So that last slide, auto steer on and off, immediately you switch on the auto steer for that cooler. And you can ask Semex about that, and I see good friends here from Samex here, and, and automatically the secondary air temperature actually starts increasing, the energy starts saving. That's because we are pushing, as Lena said, we're pushing the parameters, we're able to push the parameters along with the operator to a dynamic fashion to the maximum edge of what's possible. So how it is done? So coming back to it, left to right, you look at the data sources. You need data to do AI. So 
that's kind of given. And uh, we had the fortunate uh, or fortunate use with the best data infrastructure in the world for Pi system with Semex. It was very, very easy for us to connect and I'll come back to what the integration does. But in addition to the time series data, we also connect with other data sources. For example, videos, images, um, unstructured data, log files. In fact, some of the things we're working with some customers, what they actually have handwritten um, logs that we are actually capturing using our OCR and other AI technologies. So we're a company, not just the industrial company, we are also have verticals like healthcare, life sciences, fintech, and a horizontal platform, which I'm going to go into details, that helps to achieve that massive amount of data ingestion that we can do at scale. So that's the left-hand side. So now let's talk about the Pitchum AI platform. That's kind of the heart of it. Uh, for about last four or five years, this is being dealt with uh, Dr. Eric Singh and his students. You can read the papers, Pitching Ways and other things in our site, and read the blogs and all. There's a tremendous amount of innovations has gone into that building that platform. The platform works in a, almost like a building block approach, the civil engineering part of it, industrializing AI. So before even we do the models, whether it's a model for a cooler in a cement company or an FCC in a refinery or whatever, the building blocks all automatically gets assembled to make it in a such a level where only a few configuration is remaining. Okay, so these are the models. Now I'm talking about the AI algorithms. And as it is running with the data, although it was built with maybe one type of AI techniques, it will self-learn and change it based on what's needed for that data, for that context, for that situation. So that's the second layer. And then the third layer, the autopilots, we, uh, along with Semex, we showed you uh, two kinds of it. We didn't show you uh, the operational excellence, but basically assets. Assets will be like cooler, kiln, um, any other things. Equipments are one level below that. Processes will be pyro process or FCCs. There will be processes, and then operational excellence will be something like emissions or fuel mix optimization that you're doing. Third layer. Last but not the least, and that's where it comes in, if you've actually heard um, Rodrigo speaking yesterday, you'll see that these are three modes of our operations. As soon as you connect the data sources, our model starts, gets built, and you can start seeing prediction. So forecasting is part of it, immediately. You can start seeing, these are my variables and what it will going to be in one minute, five minute, 15 minute, 30 minute, whatever you're actually giving uh, the system to do. But then, that's only it's telling you where you'll be. What's the prescription, how you can avoid it, or how you can make it better, and that's called prescription. You go to a doctor, you have something, some pain is going on, he or she will prescribe you some medicines, and that's what the prescriptions are. That's exactly like that. But the doctor is not making you have that medi medication, he's just giving you, prescribing you. And some cases, the prescription can be simply like, hey, walk one, uh, one hour every day. Okay, that's called prescription. And then the, finally, the auto steer, the last one, where the set points through the Pi system is actually going into your control system so that operators can actually make a decision. Yep, I like it. I'm going to push it back automatically to run my cooler. So that's the end-to-end -end is the architecture. I'll let uh, Lena speak about the, what outcomes of it. What are the outcomes? The, uh, the outcomes are, at least uh, as we could see from the charts and graphs, and Prabhat will show a little bit of, of uh, what some uh, sample results will be. You can immediately start seeing uh, more stable operations. You'll see more reduced downtime. You, you'll see lower energy consumption, which leads to lower cost, overall higher yield from the system, and improved safety and sustainability. And these are based on customized or configured for your operations or your partner's op operations or whatever they're looking for. So these are the, some of the things we are seeing coming out of it directly. Uh, stability of the operation, I just want to mention one more time, the stable operations, how important it is. We wouldn't have known once before we started working with Semex in that thing. The operations by operator are great and they can still stay on the guardrails, but auto steer actually makes it really stable. So you can think of doing other things and not worry about how the perturbation is actually going on. So that's, that's a very big lesson learned for me is that um, added in this list. So uh, from there, um, we're working on some of these dashboards and KPIs, um, and this is actually configurable for the customers. So uh, we wanted to put you some things in there. Um, the main, main thing here is that, and I'll go into the architecture in more detail, but think about this way, 
the AI as a service always runs. So those forecasting or the predictions and the prescriptions are always happening. You choose to take it or not, but those prescriptions will always be there. When you say auto steer on and off, that's what it actually shows that when the Pechim industrial AI thing is going all the way back into your set points in the control system. So that's the difference. Um, on the top, alternative fuels, this was one of the things that uh, we've been working with the customer very closely. Um, and that's, that's a big thing, renewability, sustainability, but also it, it gets you a big changes in your yield. Then from there, we specifically, we worked on the, some of the meals, the pyro process, which is the kiln, cooler, and preheater. Vertical meal, that's another, another smaller process, but very important. If we do that correctly, a uh, customer can focus, or the operators can focus on the higher level things, let the system run the uh, vertical meal and the uh, ball meals. So what are the sectors in, uh, and actually we're growing. This is what we have today. And I'm sure next time we'll come back, you will have other um, blocks in there. Uh, we focused heavily on the cement that uh, thanks to um, uh, Semex and we understanding it, but we already have reached out into other parts of the metals and mining. We're uh, working with steel manufacturers, aluminum and gold, uh, power and utilities. We are coming in from both, uh, both sides, both from the generation side and also on the transmission and distribution. In fact, working with some of the renewable companies over there. Um, oil and gas, uh, so far the engagements has been refining and midstream, uh, looking into some of the uh, uh, different kind of uh, opportunities with, um, with upstream. It's a pie conference, but, but basically those are more uh, different kinds of data that's coming in. We're also going to be integrating that, those data with the pie systems. Chemicals, these are sweet spots, specialty chemicals, um, petrochemicals, that's uh, our autopilot story and the things is uh, I mean very well. And uh, we are a little bit nascent on the discrete side coming in with the equipment manufacturer. Anything you wanted to mention on that? Okay. So here is the current engagements. I'm not talking about uh, what's coming in future and all these are the, some of the current engagements we're doing. So you all have seen uh, the presentation or you will see it in the video uh, with the cement. Um, but we are not just stopping there. We are actually going in and as part of our product, now bringing in the prescriptive maintenance or the preventive maintenance part of it, we're adding the anomaly detection. So if you go into any of these autopilots, those things are, are added. But metals and mining, chemicals, some of these, these are the, some of the autopilot. Uh, if you're interested, just come back to us, talk to Lena, myself, and others. We'll go into any of the details. And plus, we'll have a Q&A at the end to go in. This. One of the things that's actually very interesting um, to me here in the being actually work for oil and gas companies and all, um, some of the processes are actually very similar across the sub-verticals. And so um, what this building block approach does is that we're not starting from scratch once we have finished one of these asset autopilots in one thing and then starting with another vertical. Maybe 70, 60, 80% of those building blocks are reusable. And that's allowing us to build this so fast and so quickly. Coming back to more details, and going into the next stage with the, uh, with the uh, Pi systems. In this case, uh, the data sources and the Petium is running on the right-hand side as a service. We are cloud agnostic, and so uh, we can run on anything, cloud, uh, private data centers, uh, on-premise and edge. In this particular one with Semex and other customers, we've been delivering this as a service. And in between, we've been using pretty much for all the engagements by Cloud Connect. Uh, to do that, but uh, working with uh, uh, Boise Soft Engineering and the product management, we have uh, pleased to say that we have progressed very well into the Boise Soft Cloud services, and we are actually running some of these things with few customers and testing that out, and uh, we will move into the OCS in the very future. Finally, AI under the hood, we, we, we were debating whether we should put this in, not put this in, and put this I, in. I wrote the legend. So, <laughs> <laughs> so the, the thing is, um, this is not to scare people or also not to show the, the, the triviality of the linears and other things is that the, we are very thankful for that platform that actually allows us to build this so quickly. So our, our data scientists or our engineering team can actually use that. But just to look at the AI under the hood, this is actually a, a ball mill, if the cement uh, friends will know this. But basically, just to do the first part, which is the predict part of it, uh, these were the inputs 
And these are the constraints, these are the goals, and actually coming in in real time and in also in history to the system. So think of a chase board. You have all seen big blues and other things doing the chase board games. Uh, they they uh, calculate millions and millions of things in the future, then, then all the things, then prioritize it, then also looks at who is playing with you and, and other things. Think of this in a multi-dimensional chase game that's actually going on in here. Multiple layers. So based on we thinking changing this dynamics of this, what temperature will reduce? That's a, just a standard thing. But when the temperature reduces, what happens to the other thing? Okay, let's see if that reduces what thi other things will come in. So just to do that prediction, uh, this much is there. Now think about how much work is going on in the back, uh, back for prescription and auto scaling. So just wanted to uh, put that in. Um, again, happy to go into uh, any amount of detail we can, you know, we'll do. Can we do this one? Sure. Um, so this is uh, this is what Semex presented uh, yesterday uh, in in their session. So I'll, I'll just quickly go through it. Uh, they, their challenge uh, when we talked to them initially was to get predictable, repeatable golden day operations. As I mentioned before, there's a lot of variability between day to day, shift to shift, depending on the skill level of the operator. And they, what they really wanted was high yield, high quality, at low cost, sustainably and with repeatability. And this is where uh, they, they started engaging with us. They wanted to prove uh, AI ML capabilities uh, to, uh, and use them to op optimize their production processes. They had a goal of getting to autonomous kiln operations by 2021, uh, 2022, and uh, you know they, they started working with us to get there. Uh, they're, they're very complex, very highly variable operations. Uh, they, they, uh, required some level of prediction, and they were trying to do this with linear models, but the, the system that they had could only forecast in bands, and it wasn't real-time enough for them to even react and, and take action. So this is where uh, Petrum Industrial AI came in, tapped into the Pi system and into other sources to, uh, to understand, what was, understand from the data what was going on, learn the patterns in the data, um, and start to forecast uh, re in real time process variables, not just forecast, but also prescribe actions that the operator must take. And then eventually, uh, after the uh, actions were validated by the operator, we went into a supervised auto steer. Uh, we, we utilized a lot of uh, the data that was already existing in Pi. There are numerous integrations with, uh, with the OSI soft suite of products. And they're expecting uh, an e a, a game-changing level of yield and energy cost improvement uh, in the range of 2 to 7% impact to the bottom line. Uh, they reduced their process variability. They increased their throughput. This, this started to become obvious from the dashboards almost as soon as auto steer was engaged. Uh, and uh, Prabhat, maybe you can talk about the... Uh, yeah, I can do that. So uh, I want you to point out the secondary air temperature plus 100 degree Fahrenheit. So this is better than the best operator all the time. So that's the thing is that when you're switching on the auto steer, and if it is running correctly and, and all the validation has been done and all, every time you're switching it on, it's actually finding something extra than that what, so because as Lena was pointing out in that initial slide, and I think that's a great slide that created one of our great colleagues, uh, Roberto, but basically it shows that I, you tend to stay in the safe zone, and that was the main thing about the static MPCs and APCs and whatever the thing is, the linear models. They, they kept it in the safe zone, and, that's, and we're not going into the unsafe, but you're taking it to the border of what you can do, and that only can be done with a massive AI running at the back uh, with massive amount of data in the real time that's processing it. So that secondary air temperature, 100 degrees, looks minimal, but thinks a huge thing as it's done every day, every time that actually is running. Similarly, tertiary air, clinker air temperature and all, that's why you get the two to 7% uh, increase in there. Uh, coming back to this last bullet of the OSI soft suite of product, as I said, uh, they had a fantastic Pi infrastructure, uh, thanks to uh, OSI soft and the Semex, uh, we were able to tap into their plant Pi servers for historical data and then the aggregated Pi server is uh, used by Cloud Connect to connect from both sides. On our side, we had the, uh, the AF structure and everything, and then we used Wave API to do the bi-directional connection. Uh, what else was got used? We used the Pi OPC, or not we, Semex used the Pi OPC for the read-write. You have to download that separately. It's a uh, OPC, normally the read. 
then PyVision, we created custom controls. Uh, uh, Rodrigo did a great job of showing that yesterday. And that uh, gave the um, operators additional information and the engineer additional information on why the prescription is being prescribed that way. You're suddenly seeing something different than what usually normally you get prescribed. You would like to know why, and that's that why was there. The confidence factor is also in there. So um, that's kind of the um, story in the Semex. Let's see what we have. Um, so from uh, architecture point of view, I don't know how detailed you want me to go into that. I can go after this, but but here we had a control system in, in one of the plants which were FL Smith. We are not, we are again, control system agnostic, nothing to do with us. Uh, use the OPC, uh, OSI is a PI system. Uh, all this entire thing is under Semex uh, of the customer. Cloud Connect was connecting us to the uh, time series data. Our product is running on a cloud um, as a SaaS. Things coming back to back to the PI Cloud Connect to the customer. Um, what's in the middle is the most important thing that I think I want to go a little bit detail. Um, autopilot engage, disengage, you have to have edge things. So you're on a cruise control in a car. Uh, there are many things that disengages the cruise control. You know that, correct? You put, put the feet on the brake, disengages it. You go into a different kind of road, like you're driving on a things, you go into a dart road, different things. It disengages. So those things are at the edge. So we have edge processing going on. Then we started with static constraints, which they gave us saying, hey, you can only increase 3%. Like when you're increasing the fan flow, you can increase it by 3%. Great, no problem. We model knows how to behave if you give them the guardrails. But then it showed that operator wants to go faster. So he's increasing the feed or increasing the speed of the kiln, but the fans are still stuck at 3%. So we changed that into dynamic constraints. Again, we use AF analytics for that. So that's entire white boxes are there. And there are so many other things uh, we can go into more detail. Uh, coming back to the things uh, we were talking to CJ and Stefan saying, go into the wayside soft integrations. So this is a partial list of the integrations. So this is not the full list. So we wanted to give you a few things. Web API, great, work like charm for us. From the very first day, there's no issues. There were a couple of things once we, once we learned and, and used that. And tech support was fantastic. The people that we worked with uh, in the partner team and, uh, and also uh, with uh, field service and all was very, very uh, helpful to us. We're coming in from an AI side and uh, but we had no problem connecting. So the number one worked like a charm. Um, connectors and interfaces, there were some few changes you can ask the customer, uh, but for us, it was just a plug and play. Um, those uh, interfaces uh, going from one version to another version just give us that. Asset framework, asset analytics, again, we had multiple ones. We actually use um, for the Cloud Connect in reverse, so the asset analytics that we create on our side or asset framework actually goes back into the customer into a, another area. So um, it's not just the customer to us, but also us to customer. And again, work works very well. Um, Pi Vision, I, we had some issues and all, and I know in things will come in the Vision 4. We are very excited what got announced in this with the new version of Pi Vision because that process book to Pi Vision was something we were looking for at that time. Customer gave us all the process books. Um, but that's okay, it, it worked out, custom controls, it's in fan. But I think the most thing that, that I got excited about or we got excited about was the OCS because that Pi to OCS connectivity was, was immediate. And uh, we haven't seen anything um, that uh, is going to pause us in getting to the OCS, so we're going to march on that. We did a demo this uh, week uh, and also uh, we have the full data running in there. Coming soon. Um, on the things, yeah, the, we are going to use more of the, the sequential data stores um, and then move from there. A uh, little bit of demo, that autopilot right there. Those are the, some of the custom controls. Sorry, the picture got shrunk for some reason, but that's what the thing is. And then um, Cloud Connect, you know. This is what it looks like from a non-technical person, um, our product. So that when the cooler is being configured or being there, this is all the things that's happened after this. Uh, Pi has been connected in this particular customer case. SAP was their uh, maintenance management system. We support others, Maximos and whatever. Um, they were looking at the autopilot. They had some fan controls. That's on the things. This is what they wanted to control. Uh, some of the great speed they wanted to control. 
and then on the top, those are the objectives that they put in. Um, that's what the autopilot, they want the autopilot to follow those objectives, and then they gave us the constraints. And then um, that three phase again, three modes, pres predictions, prescriptions, and auto steer uh, comes with that. Okay, anything you want to mention here? So um, uh, before even I go into the next steps and all, uh, any questions so far as we go into the next? Oh, you go at the end, okay. So do not ask questions now, wait till the end. So um, yeah, so uh, I know there are partners and customers here, so this slide was actually created for the customers, so just making sure. Um, we have various ways of connecting to the customers, uh, like for example, if you, if you have a customer who is interested in, uh, or you're a customer, you're interested in knowing more about us, uh, you, we'll do a discovery, introductions and all, but then after that, we need to be at the site. I mean, yeah, we're talking about the operations. We need to get connected with your uh, operations teams and all. This is not an IT story. This is more of an OT story. So we do do the site surveys, uh, shadowing the subject matter experts. We actually have spent hours and hours together, and thanks to Semex again. They have been a great partner, great customer to work with, uh, with the engineers, with the people in their uh, corporate, and also the operators at the site, understanding how they are running it. Because only once we know how, how this is being run, we can make the improvements. Um, talk to your IT architecture, data structures and all. Um, what assets you want to go fast? What processes you want to see that? Emissions, one customer came in and uh, said, you know, I don't want anything other than the fuel mix optimization and the emissions. They're interested in that enterprise level or operational excellence level thing. Great. And then we'll go and do a project plan and then we will start connecting. If it is Pi, we'll do the connection. If it is not Pi, we'll put one Pi in front and then connect it. And then um, mapping of the use cases, ITs that comes with it. I, I, I personally like this, uh, this, this one. This is where actually our brains, the, the ML people, the AI people that uh, Lena was talking about, that, um, that Eric Singh was able to attract, they come in. I mean, they are excited about it. They are excited about working in the industrial domain and, and doing real things. So they, they, are, they just always ask us, saying, hey, what's our next customer engagements? What, when can we learn the next process? So actually we had people, uh, one of our top data scientists and, other, and his team, travel to various sites in, in Semex, sitting next to the operator, and like for example in Balcones, Texas, sitting there and understanding and hearing from them. And, and that's what helps us to build a product and the uh, autopilot, but in your case, as we have the product, it's just a basic configuration. Uh, you don't need a data scientist. You actually have your own people or us working together, doing the tag mapping and, and whatever the next phases are, and then configure that. So it's a, it's a configuration points at that time to get that, uh, this picture done. This is the picture. And then uh, we go and work with you for the predict, prescribe, and validate, and three phases, and then we sign off. So that's about what we have. Um, we're very interested in uh, following up with this. Happy to take questions and uh, go from there. Perfect. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. We're ready to take questions since we're recording. Uh, we need you to wait for the mic so we can raise your hand. And as you will get the mic to ask your question, please state your name and company before asking the question. Hi, my name is Sukumar Patnaik from Nalco Champion in uh, Texas. Um, my, my question to you is that in your um, AI um, um, manipulation, you need clean data. Do you expect the customer to provide clean data to you or do you take the data and look, look at different patterns and do exclusions, et cetera, in there? Fantastic question, fantastic question. So. Uh, and I'll, I'll start the answer and then I'll let Alina comment. So no, we don't need you to do any uh, cleaning of the data and other things. This is a completely new paradigm. This is a, uh, that what we are bringing in. You actually don't need to clean the data because we want to know what really happened, okay? And, and what really happened, we want to give, like when we are looking at, when we are driving, we are not looking at the clean data from uh, our okay. surroundings. 
So we, when the autopilot is running your car or auto steer is running your car, they also need the same visual, visual aids that we are getting to that autopilot. So, so short answer is that yes. The next answer is that, Lena, can you tell them what we do with the data, what sure. are the things we have? So uh, at, at Semex, for example, we, we, we got the data. There was a lot of, um, uh, there was, the, the data was not clean uh, to start with. So we used a series of techniques to clean the data. There are a few techniques that we can use to leverage redundancy amongst the variables also. So we, we are able to decide, you know, whether certain data streams need, you know, do we need, not because of we can handle tons and tons of data streams, but is it necessary to have all of them? Uh, we also use several techniques to, uh, to align the windows in the data. Uh, it, data was collected at different intervals to uh, be the timestamp alignment, window alignment. Uh, removal of outliers, it's just a series of techniques that we use to make sure that the signals that we're, we're getting to uh, our models were accurate. And because we use the, these techniques up front, it made us more robust to live production data because live production data is going to be the same type of data, yeah? So uh, that helped us. And, and for the people in the audience, um, if you have a clean data and you're giving it to us, we'll take the clean data, but we'll also take the raw data as well. Because we want to also use these techniques because it's uh, AI cleaning up and other things is completely different from the normal cleanup of visualization, or you're trying to do an ad hoc trend, uh, you know, to remove some anomalies and all. So in short answers, well, we'll be happy to clean those, yes. Hi, uh, Fernando from Tejos. Uh, my question would be, um, what is really the difference between an AI autopilot from a uh, APC or a real-time optimization system? Because those ones that we have some experience in working with, they even might use some nonlinear models. Uh, I, I saw that some difference when you, you mentioned about uh, changing restrictions dynamically, which we, we cannot do uh, for sure, but I was wondering what really the difference between the, that type of autopilot from a standard yeah. RTO solution. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I wish uh, I was just telling Lena uh, last night uh, because we gave the slide deck and then uh, the SEMEX presentation happened. So uh, if you look at um, a, um, the way the APCs, MPCs, and the, uh, even though they have nonlinear models, I'm not uh, trying to at all, been in the industry for some time. At the end of the day, it comes to a matrix, correct? And then you have some inputs, whether it can be feed or other things, and you, the operator places that in that uh, static matrix, and the matrix tells you what the set points will be. That's done maybe seven years ago, maybe last year, maybe last month, okay? But in real world, when you are actually doing this, you need that to be dynamic every second. That's what we bring in. So when we were actually giving the flows the fan parameters, and uh, I see Carlos there, and all, uh, um, they know it much better than I do. They were astonished that the prescriptions which was coming in was completely outside of that band. We might want the fa fan f um, two to be here and the fan three to be here. Because what AI is thinking about the chess game, correct? It says that if I push the pressure in here and then reduce it, next time in five minutes, I will actually have more things going down. So there's nothing wrong with what you have or what you have with APCs and MPCs. Great, if you're happy with it, continue. But if you want to do more, let us show you how the dynamic, the how the AI paradigm is actually working. And yeah, sure, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I will add to that in that there may be seasonality variations in your data as well. Uh, an AI system is able to capture that long range trend as well. Uh, and uh, uh, last but not the least, we're, we're talking about you know, hundreds and thousands of variables. So systems of systems versus like a single unit or a single uh, s single asset optimization. It's really, if, if you want to do it across a range of processes, you know, that would be a m appropriate use of AI. I think that's a, that's a great point and thanks Lena for bringing that. Yes, th there have been success with one compressor and you get 10 data scientists to go and build that one compressor model and it runs great and, and but then you take it to the 500 compressors 
uh, other assets, they're working with each other, and you want to deploy this at a scale, then it degrades or it does, doesn't work. We built the enterprise capabilities for AI in our system from the very first thing. We do not do a separate model for a POC or a pilot versus the things because those because we build it on top of the AI platform, the best AI platform right now there for this uh, Symphony AI platform. That helps us to build this with the enterprise capabilities in it. Okay, the versioning, the self-learning, and all these things that come uh, part of that. Thanks, Praval and uh, Lena, for this nice presentation. I have one technical question. Uh, like you've shown uh, the cooler performance which you improved uh, to Synex. And uh, so, uh, like in the past days, there was a fudgy logic which was continuously uh, giving uh, the continuous set points to the control system like FLS or ABVN. And the operator was not manually inserting something. So, in your AI pilot, are you, because you are uh, taking data from Pi, Pi is not allowed to write something directly on the control system. So you directly guiding it to operator or you are giving set point directly in control system via any mechanism? Yeah, so for us, we stop at the Pi system. So uh, 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 we we send the data back to the Pi system and then it's up to the customer to do that. Uh, to so that customer uh, operator uh, yeah. so and then the Yeah, process. so you need to ask that customer that mm. question. Uh, we okay. stop at the Pi system. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, at this time, we'd like to thank uh, Prabal and Lena. Uh,